Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For this episode, we're going to be dealing with the question, how do we prepare for worship? Worship is an area where all of us can improve. Sometimes it is said, I didn't get anything out of the worship services. Often this is said in condemnation of those who lead in worship. But true worship is not just as a spectator. So these words condemn ourselves as well. Perhaps for all of us, our worship would be even more significant if we were careful to prepare for that worship. Consider the children of Israel. At Mount Sinai, the people knew that God was to meet with them, so they sanctified and prepared themselves in Exodus 19, verses 9 to 14. What preparations can we make for coming to worship God? First things first, we can develop a proper attitude to what worship is. Worship is not a family reunion, a fashion show, a social hour, or a sleeping time. Worship is a drawing near to God to praise and honor Him. When we meet around the Lord's table, we're remembering the body of Jesus on the cross and the blood that was shed for the remission of sins, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. But this remembrance should have meaning to us. It should cause us to be thankful to God for sending His Son in the first place. It should cause us to be thankful that He would accept us in Christ even though we are undeserving. It should not be a ritual that we participate in, giving no thought to it whatsoever. Moreover, when we sing, why do we do this? It's in order to praise and honor God, Colossians 3.16. Notice in this verse that we sing to the Lord. We're not singing just to ourselves. God doesn't demand that we be professional singers in order to sing, but we are to take singing seriously because we're singing to God. All of our worship is done with God in mind. Even preaching is done this way. The preacher is to speak God's words as written in Scripture, not his own opinion, 1 Peter 4.11. We as listeners are to take note of what was said and compare it to the truth. The Bereans did in Acts 17, verse 11. If what was said is truth, we're to apply it in our lives, better enabling us to serve God. If what was said is an error, we need to correct the error and hopefully cause the preacher to understand God's word more completely, like Aquila and Priscilla did with Apollos in Acts 18 verses 24 to 28. Having a proper attitude to what worship is, is essential for pre preparing for worship. Second, we need to bring our lives as free from sin as possible. We can't successfully worship God with a guilty conscience. Paul tells Timothy that we're to lift up holy hands in prayer to God. How can we do this if we refuse to repent? Unrepented sin means that our soul is, danger, is in danger of being cast from the presence of God, 1 John 1 verse 5 and Luke 13 verse 3. It's impossible to worship God the way He wants if we are unwilling to change our lives from sinful actions. Sometimes this means that we need to do more than simply asking God for forgiveness but requires that we correct something we've done to something, someone else. We can only receive the forgiveness of sins if we are willing to repent of them. Whether we sin knowingly or unknowingly, a Christian is not to live in sin, but humbly repent and seek God's forgiveness. Thirdly, in order to prepare for worship, we need to eliminate personal differences among brethren. If the differences are a matter of truth, we must stand for truth seeking that the brother in wrong will repent. If it is a matter of opinion, we should drop it, realizing that we have liberty to do in Christ all that is right, Romans 14, verse 3. If it is a matter of sin, we need to deal with it, Matthew 5, 23 and 20, to 24, and Matthew 18, verse 15. Our task is to love one another and exhort each other to love and good works. That's the purpose of gathering together in Hebrews 10, verse 24. We can't do this if we're constantly bickering. There's a difference between fighting for truth and being divisive because someone doesn't do the same thing as you. As Christians, we need to study the Bible and be united in its teaching because that's what God wants us to do from 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. If we do this, we'll worship God according to the scriptures. Next, we can prepare for worship by studying God's word. 
This could be study in general, 1 Timothy 4.13 to 15, or a specific study for something that is coming up. When it is our turn to lead around the Lord's table, what will we say? Brethren need to put some thought into their words because this memorial is so important to us. When we lead songs, what songs will we lead? Are we preparing people for the different areas of worship, such as the Lord's Supper, for prayer, for the invitation to the lost? When we pray, do we understand what prayer is and what should we be praying for? Are we confident that God will answer our prayer? James 5.16 when giving of our means, are we reminding ourselves of God's blessings for us and how we should cheerfully want to give back to Him, as 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and 2 and 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 say? Do we fully uh, understand the purpose of giving? When preaching, are we preparing our thoughts ahead of time so that we may edify those who are listening, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 19? And when it comes to our Bible study, have we looked at the material beforehand? Are we preparing our children? Are, are we going to be reliable in attendance? All of these things require planning, and this planning can be accomplished through study. Finally, the reason why we need to prepare for worship is because we're not only there to worship God, but to exhort and provoke one another. In Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to read verses 24 through 25. There we read, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Even the faithful need to be encouraged, and we must be involved in encouraging each other. We cheer athletes all the time, and they try harder and do better. How much more can we accomplish this in the church? In order to do this, though, we need to be present. Having the things of this world get in the way of being in attendance is not only hurting us, but others as well. Let us never, ta uh, let, let us never talk the worship services and the church down. It will destroy enthusiasm and joy, and will affect you, your family, and all who hear you. On the contrary, let us exhort one another to be faithful, and to participate in the worship of God. Being a Christian isn't easy and requires effort on our part. Coming to worship with the saints on Sunday and any other day shouldn't be just another event on our calendar. We only get out of worship what we put in. Let's give worship the attention it deserves so that not only will we get something out of it, but will encourage others as well. The best encouragement we can give is convincing someone that they need to be a Christian. One of, the way we, one of the ways we do this is, by, is teaching by example. If we show others the joy that we have in Christ, the peace that we have in Christ, and the hope that we have in Christ, then it can motivate them to obey God as well. Let's all be striving to be the Christians God would have us to be. Perhaps you're listening, though, and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God. Believe it and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. This podcast will be on hiatus until Tuesday, October the 18th, 2016. In the meantime, we invite you to visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. There you'll find free online Bible-based material. You'll find links to more of our podcasts as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again on October the 18th when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now and have a great day.